doing this. I'm going to palpate along the orbits. Make sure I can palpate the zygomatic arch. Okay, I want you to open as big as you can and close so there's no limit need limitation on opening. Follow down some cervical chain. That's all I would do for the extra oil. Cool. We're going to start in the maxilla. You can get right in the vestibule too, eh? So you can see. That was one of the things I did as a long time ago I missed a sinus track because I didn't lift the vestibule you know look deeply into the vestibule looks good what I'll do is probing and what are we looking for so we're looking for any exudate that may occur yep. we are looking for any deep probing depths that may occur whether it's generalized or very specific, like for a cracked tooth. Right. If the and then one way you can do is with your finger, or if you want to be more specific, you can use your use a cotton tip applicator. And we're just looking for any sensitive spots the patient may feel any sensitivity. Just raise your hand if you have any discomfort, okay? Mm hmm towards me a little bit. Again, you can use your finger. Um, I find a cotton valve here is just way more accurate. And you can see in there that I have a nice yep. preserve. And I just take a number two cotton pellet. And what I'm going to ask to do, <coughs> the patient to do is raise their hand. When they feel the cold and put their hand back down when you don't feel the cold anymore, okay? I'm going to test a couple of teeth. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to test on the opposite side for this patient, but uh, normally I would um, test on the contralateral side. Sorry. So the hand is important to quantify the baseline. Your hand up for as long as you hold the cold, so feel the cold, sorry, mm -hmm. and then it goes back down when you don't feel the cold anymore. You're trying to see if it's lingering, but you need a baseline to compare to other teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes what I do when the patient says they're super sensitive to cold, I'll start on a cusp tip or the inside the ledge and kind of gauge it. And we're not starting with the tooth that's, again, the one that. Uh, we're not laser beaming into the onto the uh, the tooth that we suspect is the problem. We're getting our baseline first. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the tooth that we suspect is the problem. Nothing there. <clears throat> no. So just need to go to the center there. And so when I do percussion, I percuss from the side and the occlusal as well. And I should have another mirror in my kit, but I didn't. Awesome. Okay. So what I want you to do, raise your hand if you have any discomfort, okay? Mm-hmm. That's a good idea doing from the side. Mm -hmm. Slight there, okay. And it looks like you jumped the tooth that we might be. I do. Looking. I try to save it to the end because then if the, I find sometimes with the pain receptors, ended up getting fired. It kind of, you, your tests aren't accurate after. Mm -hmm. and again, I think the the point that we're trying to make here is you don't laser beam right into that tooth and do that tooth right away and that's the only tooth. It's doing the... Okay. 
bite together and open, bite together and open, bite together and open. So you're getting the patients to bite really hard or what do you, what do you ask them? I get them to bite a little bit harder. Okay. I can usually tell mm. and open. Okay. And where did you feel that, top or bottom? Top. Top. Um, bite together, squeeze so right and open. Doing the I'm doing the posing. Mm -hmm. Um, when I get them to bite together, I can feel how hard they're biting on the stick. So if I find that they're not biting hard <coughs> enough, I'll direct them to squeeze. Okay. We're just going to test over here. One where you can use the fiber optics. And we're looking for the transmission of light through the tooth. Ooh, very nice. So if there's a crack anywhere in that tooth, there's a crack actually. Can we see it? Yeah. But it goes right through. Huh. Was that hot? Yeah. That hot? Oh, okay. So you gotta be careful of heat. So if there is a crack fracture in the tooth, it will block the transmission of the light. So that's one option. We also have the the uh, curing light, which is another light. Just be careful of looking at the light. So you can see she does have a crack there and it kind of stops the transmission. Oh, it does stop the transmission. I don't know if you can see that on no, your video though. But yeah. So that's another option for translimination and we use that for determining uh, cracked teeth and fractures in teeth. Okay, so there are a few ways to, t to test heat and we typically pull this out occasionally. And one, there are a few different techniques. Uh, Major Meadows uses a rubber dam with uh, a mono inject, so rubber dam and then a mono inject full of hot water and have the tooth isolated and, and splash the tooth with some hot water. Um, you can use um, like a greenie point to create friction on the tooth, that's another mechanism. And another one is using just the uh, the Optura on the system, on the elements. So we're just gonna test that one tooth and see if we get a response. Just close up a little bit there. So in the so we put a little bit of toothpaste on the tooth and we're going to put a little bit of gutta percha on there. The gutta percha is set for 200 degrees. And we'll just keep the tip embedded because the tip is, you know, not 200 degrees, but probably around 150. And then we're looking for any type of response. So any in response? this case, there's no response. Mm -mm. And what we're looking for is that response of C fibers, that dull aching response to, to, to heat.